Good morning. Well, as good as the morning as you could have, because I come to bring you some more gloom and doom. Experts are warning, and I am proud to consider myself one of those experts. I am very lucky to be an expert. This is a heavy cross I have to bear, but it does make me feel nice about what I'm doing to help the people of the world. Experts are warning, I am an expert. Uh, I was very lucky. Uh, two, was it two, three, four, five, twenty years ago, they put all our names in a hat, the expert hat. They pulled my name out and that's how I became an expert. And I have come to warn you that the winter wave will be worse than the first. We will see coronavirus leap to unprecedented bounds. This invisible killer. Here, there, where are you? There's a, a cute little story on the BBC. There's a Radio 1 DJ and his name is Greg. They didn't give it a surname. I guess that's he's one of those Lady Gaga people. I'm just Greg. Greg, and he's doing an international up yours to coronavirus day. And apparently he got the idea because there was some woman whose business, according to the woman, had been destroyed by the virus, it, which, it, which it had. It was, it was destroyed by what seems to be a, a, a soft tyrannical or heavy tyrannical government that destroyed your fucking business the virus didn't destroy your business the government destroyed your business but anyway she's she blamed it on the virus and this radio one dj named greg is going to have an international up years to coronavirus day i'm going to show that virus how cute is that that's very cute this is the perfect virus for the emoji generation very cute everything's cute we're all in this together two sheep Keep socially distances. Mask with cuteness. It's cute. It's a fucking cute thing. And there's nothing wrong with cute if you're a kid. Right? But eventually you grow up and you realize that your government is trying to kill you. <laughs> That's what happened. You go, okay, there was, there was a time for putting away childish things. And now it's time to ignore the bullshit about the mask. I feel like my English accent is slipping some days. This, I don't know if this is going to be um, funny. This is just, a, I guess, a little reminder that tomorrow, you know, I understand people are in places of employment. You want to keep your job. But if you are going into a shop, I'm, t I'm telling myself this. I mean, I don't have, you know, you do what you want, obviously. But actually, please don't. Because I, I, I think, I do think that if, if we give these idiots, these psychotics, the mask, if we give them, yes, we're on board. When this whole thing kicked off, man, this sounded like science fiction. But now in retrospect, it's like, yes, yes, from the very beginning, they were talking about we'll never get back to normal. The new, They were putting that out there from the fucking beginning. It never was an option that the virus would just go away. That it would come and go like the flu. It, that never was a fucking up. From the very beginning, it was there's going to be this. And here it fucking is. And here, here's the big brand name war for the fucking vaccine. And I, you know, what seemed like science fiction a few months ago is, <laughs> if, unless I'm mad, is happening. Unless we say, no, where did people in Britain, you know, in the history books, where did people draw the line? You know, it was the, it was the masks. It was the mask. Maybe. maybe. I don't know, but great, but Greg from DJ Radio One is going to up yours coronavirus day because he cares. And I imagine this 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 woman apparently who said she had her business destroyed by the virus. You know, she she didn't get it right. That she had her business destroyed by the government. Um, but that's that's the kind of people they like on the BBC. It was destroyed by this this horrible invisible killer. No, it was just he's not not invisible. It's those fuckers. They destroyed your business. But the great thing about the virus and saying up yours to the virus is that if you wear a mask, you can go outside and punch the air and swing around and put you show that, oh, you show that coronavirus, up yours, I don't care. I, the coronavirus comes here. I'm going to tell him, you silly little bird, skedaddle, right? 
up yours to coronavirus. What, what, what bullshit. <clears throat> That's very convenient, though. You can do this invisible killer. Who are you, gonna, you know, when I was a kid, maybe three or four years old, you know, when you, when you bang your head against something as a kid, and you cry... My mother would do this. She'd say, I hit my head on the door. And she'd say, you go over there and hit that door. My mother was a bit mad in her own way. That's probably why I am the way I am. She'd say, you go hit the door. And she'd and kind of give the door a little slap. And somehow that would make me feel better. you know. But that's just, it's the same kind of principle. Up yours to coronavirus death. <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm only mad because it's a numbers issue, right? Because all you fuckers, all you BBC fuckers, you've got the broadcasting megaphone. This is sanity. This is sanity. Hello, we're the BBC. This is sanity. We are the sane ones. Sane, sane, sanity. We know about mental health. Here's a link to a, a mental health thing. Sane, sane, sanity. You know, and, and real people are out here going, I know I'm not mad. And if I am, thank fuck for that. This will be a short one. Thank you, as always, to the to the patrons. I, I am so excited. I have a gig, and I, I'm sure this person is watching. And uh, thank you so much. I I can't believe I'm really looking forward not just to the not just to the gig, but the fact that it's it's not going to be a socially distanced gig. It's not going to be a masked gig, because I am a stubborn motherfucker, and I I like I say I am perfectly fine with eating in the same sh shop, eating food from the same shop. For however many fucking years it takes us to get rid of these corrupt fucking pigs who have hijacked, who have hijacked everything fucking normal, right? I will eat the same fucking food because I happen to know somebody on the inside, you know. This is, this is what, I mean, this is, you know, not to be hyperbolic, but this is, you know, in other totalitarian systems, this is the kind of stuff you'd have to do. Like, I know a friend who works in a shop. They think it's bullshit. They're friendly to our cause, right? But that's basically it, you know. So I'm, you know, I'm not, I, I'm not leading a, a big. I'm, I'm doing it on here. I'm telling people like, you know, like I'm telling you, if if you're like me and you think this mask thing is bullshit, tomorrow is your chance to exercise it. This is not a cute little or well that ends well. A funny Edinburgh Fringe show about freedom of speech from a university that was apologizing anyway for its safe space thing, right? This is the real fucking deal. This is the real fucking deal. How dare they have? <laughs> How can we do, Dr. Fauci, Matt Hancock, who's, who's that other pricks, the, the Chris Witty, right? All these fucking assholes are on record as saying the masks don't do any good at all. The masks don't do any, but now, and what is their one thing? It's like they did with the climate change thing. You'd say, but it's, it, it's declining. That's part of climate change too. We're learning new things about it all the time. I know you're learning new things about it all the time because you get fucking paid to discover new things about it all the time. If you paid me the amount of money you pigs fucking get, I'm sure I could find new things about the coronavirus. Yeah, give me your fucking salary. I can say, hmm, apparently an aversion to potatoes may be another sign. You know, just, you just find somebody that you don't like, that you want to win the coronavirus argument with. You know, fuck you, and I'll tell you what. And another thing, I saw you use a manila envelope the other day. Well, this is a novel coronavirus, and apparently you've got it. You know, yeah, give me your fucking salary, and I can I could find shit to keep it going. I could I could find ways to peddle the lie. I'm coming around to this idea that it's that it is purposeful confusion. Again, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm gonna be very clear. I am just seeing the world. I am hearing these pricks tell us that masks don't do any good, and now they're telling us that they're fucking mandatory. This is not a conspiracy. This actually happened. You know, I heard it today they mentioned that the you know the military when the mili well of course when the military went in to build the Florence Nightingale Hospital nobody built the Florence Nightingale Hospital that was the XL Center they had trade shows there and trade fairs and all that stuff I went to vape jam there when I when I became a vape fanatic and I thought I might okay I'm free from which I need to do again because I need to quit smoking this is I, I need to live to finish Paradise Lost book seven will be done today to finish Paradise Lost and to live on and see this world set to right somehow, which will involve getting all these... How, how are we going to do this? How will we get all these leaders out of power? It seems nigh on impossible. Because I imagine I imagine anybody 
in a position of leadership who thinks this is bullshit is worried about being the tinfoil hat person. I think we should all go. But last night I thought maybe we should, because there's a couple of um, there's a couple of groups that I've become aware of. One is called Keep Britain Free, and they've been very vocal. There's a woman named Jacqueline Dunn that has given some very impassioned speeches from the get-go about the issuing of DNR orders, the culling of the elderly, you know, some of the nefarious stuff that this may actually be about, um, the, of the many nefarious things this may actually be about. So I invite, I invite you to look her up, Jacqueline Dunn, that's G-A-C-Y, it's one of those weird names, G-A-C, she spells it differently, Jacqueline, G-A-C-Y-L-N, Dunn, D-U-N-N-E. So check her out. There's a group called Keep Britain Free. Uh, I don't know much about it other than that it was supposedly begun by this entrepreneur named Simon Dolan. I know rich people funding shit like that, but he did put something in the high court talking about the unconstitutionality of, uh, of these measures. So, you know, that, that is somebody, right? And, this, and there's a group called Keep Britain Free. There's another one I found out about last night called Stand Up X, and thank God it's not a stand-up comedy thing. But they are protesting as well. But again, most of this stuff seems to be London. So wherever you are uh, in England uh, tomorrow, know that I'm with you in solidarity if you decide to walk in and not wear a mask. And, and further double down and say, I'm not going to give you a reason either. I cannot give you a reason because... You know, we found out last night that you're not, you're supposed to wear them in takeaways too. But the you know the sto ministers ministers urged to end face covering confusion. The government has been accused of mixed messaging over where people will have to wear face coverings when new rules come into force. Uh, if you are going into a takeaway and you are this is Brandon Lewis, Minister Brandon Lewis, who's Brandon Lewis and why is he better than you? That's the question you should. Why is Brandon Lewis a better person than you? Said face coverings would be mandatory when purchasing takeaway food and drink, but not if you were eating at the premises. This is Brandon Lewis. And for some reason, he's more important than you. He, Brandon Lewis is more important than you, and that's why he gets to tell you, quote, if you are going into a takeaway and you are eating in somewhere that's got a takeaway, then that is like hospitality. You are eating. It's not practical to wear a face mask. We recognize that. Oh, it's the Northern Ireland secretary. So don't listen to him, Brandon Lewis, because this is all, this is all predicated. It, it really is. It, it's like it's kind of a, a willing hypnosis that I think a lot of us go through. You know, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I had it with uh, I had it with Trump. It's like this is. All right, here's, you know, the, somebody, he at least seems to be speaking to uh, people where I'm from about some of the issues. And some of the things he said, look, I, I tell you, when he came out and said, we're going to defund the UN out of billions of dollars of climate change nonsense, that was the first fucking leader since the climate change bullshit began. You can understand where I was like, I'm fucking voting for this guy. That alone, and then I'm going to tear up the Iranian deal that, that was all—it was all about Obama saying, "What are the who, who are the creepiest leaders in the world I can sit down with and uh, give access to nuclear weapons to, so I can get the fucking look at me, Mister Peace and handshake, you know, all these things." And yet the other day he said he wished Ghislaine Maxwell well, Ghislaine Maxwell. I don't think fucking hell. But even before that, to me, it was the Wi-Fi deal. We're going to make it easier for Wi-Fi companies to build it. That's it. Fuck it. Forget it. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here learning about Ofcom censoring people who criticize 5G, which the science apparently is not, you know, like, like the science of this stupid fucking whatever this virus is, never settled. It's not settled. It, it's not like climate change. Climate, not settled. Plenty of scientists don't agree with this. Plenty of qualified scientists don't agree. Plenty of qualified doctors and scientists don't fucking believe in this virus either. But yet, we are, thanks to the media and the fucking leaders, we are acting as if it's true to our own fucking detriment. And if we put on those fucking masks tomorrow, we are acting as if this is true to our own fucking detriment. It's a novel coronavirus. This thing about novel coronavirus, I mean, it changes all the time. So what I said you know, two months ago about masks are utterly stupid and they, of course, they're not going to prevent the virus from spreading and it's really dumb to wear one. And you could probably, you know, if you're especially old and you have a respiratory condition, you could actually probably die. 
yes, I did say that. I did say that. I forgot that the internet recorded things. I did say that. But this is a novel coronavirus, the likes of which we've never seen before. Come on, but we're in a bullshit. We, w we would only act on that presumption if we believed that they were better than us. It really, I'm an expert. I, I, picked, I picked my name out of a hat and I'm the expert. I'm the health expert. That's what this is. Do you think Matt Hancock is a qualified health expert? Honestly, or, or is he a spoiled brat that always got his way? That's what fucking Matt Hancock is. He's a spoiled fucking brat that always got his way. That's why, that's why he tells the female MP who criticized him early on in the fucking thing. I think she should, actually, she didn't really criticize. She just opened her mouth with a differing opinion to him. I think she needs to watch her tone. I'm the great Matt Hancock. He's not better than you. A lot of this, you know, let's get spiritual here. I would say a lot of this, a lot of this could be cured by self-love. God, that sounds fucking mental healthy, doesn't it? Self-respect and self-love. Love yourself. You know, look, I'm coming. I'm coming at this from a framework of I. I believe. I believe in some kind of deity, right? And I believe I, even if it is just a poetic thing, a literary thing, to say that. Man, human, was created in God's image. It's that simple. Then we don't cover that up. We don't cover that up. You know, we try to... And another thing, too, is we actually try to help the sick. I said this in the beginning when the church is closed. When the church is closed. Father Damien went out to the lepers. These fucking pigs shut immediately... Unquestionably shut immediately. The ancient tradition of church, boom. And they, they must have been so rife with corruption. They had to be, the, the body of the church, the Anglican church, had to be so rife with corruption and relativism and surrender to the government science. They had to be, they had to be right at that point where the fucking curtain could come down like that. They wouldn't have been able to pull this shit off in the Renaissance. Or any other time period. Even in the 70s, they wouldn't have been able to get away with this. There would have been enough old people saying, you got to keep the churches open. You know, you can't just, you know, I would rather die. Like their faith would have been so strong. They would have said, I'm perfectly fine with getting a fever, but you got to keep the house of God open. I know some of you might be atheist or whatever, but, you know, even, even the, forget the church, the pub. You want to go? Do you want to go to a pub where you have to order from a fucking app at a table, and then you leave, and uh, you know everybody gets the same treatment? They spray it down because you're a dirty, you know, like all people, you're dirty. I go back to Lenny Bruce. You know what's what's wrong with the body? You're kissing and hugging. You know the toilet is only dirty. It's, the toilet's a toilet. The toilet, you know, the toilet here. Really. That's what it is, isn't it? The shame, the shame of the of the. It, we're, there's so many other things we're not ashamed about. Every pride they trot they trot out people in gimp gear with ball gags, or or in San Francisco they used to have the Folsom Street Fair, and mothers and children would, would be walking by as as is their want as is what you know you 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 take your child out on a summer day, you know you don't want to stay shielded up from the world. It's I know it's hard. I I I'm trying to some days. You don't want to you don't want to stay shielded up from the world. But there's, you know, you're walking around with your children and there's fucking grown men in assless chaps getting spanked in the middle of the fucking street at a thing called the Folsom Street Fair. You know, so there's no, there's no shame about anything. There's absolutely no shame. You know, and then, and then, we, and then, and then the, the, the educators have the audacity to say, this is actually good for children. You know, we, t we teach them about homosexuality. We, we, can't they, we can't they learn about that stuff on their own? You know, I, I was never taught homosexuality in school. We didn't have a we didn't have a course. Okay, now we're going to talk about why homosexuality and LGBT issues. It's like no, we just you know we learned about gay people along the way, and yes, we told we told some jokes, right, as is want or whatever. But you know, we that's just it. You you have trust in people. You have you have trust. In, crazy, and there's so many things we're just not we're not ashamed about anymore. You should be you should be ashamed to have your you know, with the assless chaps. You should be ashamed of that. Now, does that mean you shouldn't do it? No. You do it in the comfort of your own home, but to
to, to do it out, you know, or to be wearing a dog gift mask and dancing with the Metropolitan Police, how can you how can you ever hold any a politician accountable from that point on? It's like I think I said that in a video, the last video I did. How can you? Isn't it true that on the night of November it doesn't matter, right? Except Epstein, right? That's the one. That's the one fucking thing that'll get people to go. I don't sweat. Like, you know, the one fucking thing, because we know that they still know you can tell us to wear masks all fucking day long and you can tell us to socially distance and you can tell us not to put our children in school and you can tell us that when they do go to school, computers are going to be the fucking teachers and that AI can determine elections and that uh, that we need fucking three of the greediest. There's no Jonas Salk anymore. Fuck Jonas Salk. Fuck, fuck Louis Pasteur. Fuck these individuals who came up with medical treatments. No, it's got to be greedy fucking global fucking assholes like Pfizer. You know, that they know no matter what they do, they know that the, they, can, they can tell us about all this shit. But the majority of the of people in this world want to see pedophiles strung up by their fucking balls. Unlike the BBC, it is Jimmy Savile. I know, but it is Jimmy Savile. I know. I don't want to believe it, but it is Jimmy Savile. So even if it, even if I did believe it, it is Jimmy Savile. Apparently, there was there was some um, in the in the original because I I came out here after shortly after the Savile story broke. In other words, after he died, and they're like, "Oh, he died." Apparently, he was really bad. You know, the BBC after they after they, after they didn't have to suck. Who the hell is this? Oh, people! <laughs> this may, I'm gonna answer that later. I'm working. I'm not really working. Am I? I do have a gig. I can't thank you enough. I'm so excited to have a gig that's not gonna be because that's the only way. I, I will not. I will not meet the world on Bill Gates's terms. This is the terms. This is the world now. No, it's not, motherfucker. You meet the world on your terms. I'm meeting the world on my terms. And the world the world that was before this shit. Because all of this I think I think I think this should all go down on record because I, I feel optimistic today and I have a feeling that I don't know. I, I have a feeling that a lot of people aren't gonna do that tomorrow. And maybe some of them will have uh, apparently in Canada was it in Canada? This there was a story that, that, that some people are issuing fake cards mask exemption cards and i thought you little you little rats the media over there you little fucking rats if this was the fucking holocaust apparently people are issuing uh fake aryan certificates to help jews flee from the you know like you little fucking rats what the you know th there wasn't any in this country there has been for people with asthma there has been no advice about where to get a medical uh, uh, exemption card not to wear the fucking mask from the that was just uh, declared as a fiat these idiots think nothing through right but but that story apparently and this is really bad to be issuing these fake medical exemption cards these people they're, they're like the ordinary people who are going to save us, man. I'm convinced of it. They're going to save us from your fucking nonsense. But there they were just ratting them out. How can you spot a fake medical exemption card from wearing a mask? You creeps. That's, that's who they would have been. That's who they would have been in Germany in World War II. How to spot somebody who's, who's not wearing the yellow star that should? You fuckers. And you know what? I don't mean that hyperbolically, really. I, I don't. Because I, fi I find that the behaviors I'm engaging in, you know, and you could say, you could say this isn't World War II or, or, or Wellian or communist takeover or whatever the fuck this thing is. You could say that. But did I ever think I was going to be in a position where I was going to go to shops and say, <clears throat> what do you think about all this? Yes. I want to tell you, <clears throat> if I were to come in here and not wear the mask. What would you do? That's what I've been doing. I've been, you know, conting contingency plans. You know, people on the inside, because I'm gonna get my food and get my cigarettes until I quit smoking, which I need to quit smoking, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, because I do. I want to live long enough to see this over. 
You know, I don't want to die in this world. I don't want to die in this world as it is. What an insult it would be. There will be no singing over the, no singing over his body. I know he wanted to play Rocket Man. I thought, I do. I want to play something cool. Rocket Man. You know, and then a lot of Beethoven too, you know, just, you know, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be able to have the funeral. You know, my egotistical mind says I should have. <laughs> there were three people today separated by 17 yards of face cloth. And then they tell lies about me, too. They'd say, like, I was there at his, on his deathbed. Well, not there. I was there virtually on his deathbed. And he said, and he was so he was so sad he couldn't press record. He was too weak to press record. And he, But he said to me, he said, I wished I would have worn the mask. You know, slip out whatever information there. I believe in it now. Those were his final words to me. So we're going to put the the blue plaque up. We'll, we'll call him. In the book about his life will be, he realized too late or some bullshit. Yeah, saw saw the garden down. Boris Johnson, greed, pig. You know, we know it's, we know it's not John, Johnson. Is Johnson is held hostage. Johnson, but we know what we know what a weak bastard he is. He's held hostage by Cummings, and Cummings is held hostage by somebody, or Cummings is part of the big thing. Who knows? Who knows? But it's confusion, right? So I thought maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's to get people fucking absolutely confused. Let's drive us all insane. But that doesn't take even if that was the case, even if it wasn't part of a we look at all the options of the mask. Not a single fucking one of them have to do with health. Unless you unless you are honestly a bit too trusting of international bodies, a bit too trusting, I think masks do not help at all. And I'm going to be very clear on this: there's nothing good that masks can do in this crisis. There's no need to wear them. Uh, it will not prevent anything. Uh, it will not contain the spread of anything. Uh, so mask, no. I would say absolutely, definitively, no. A few months have gone by. You think they'll? Yeah, it's a few months. Just, you know what that is? It's like in the office when Ricky Gervais is uh, David Brent is saying, I forget what he he's, he's, he's Nobody's going to lose their jobs. Nobody's going to lose their jobs. And then he gets this offer to pr be promoted, and he, and he, says, uh, he says, "Now you realize that so many people will have to lose jobs." And I, I know your, I know your, your, uh, your staff are very dear to you. And he says. No, they, they won't remember. <laughs> That's what they're doing to us. We told, you know, they're mad, I imagine they get together and they think, we, we did tell them not to wear masks. You know, they wouldn't do any good. and they, 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 There was no reason to wear a mask. Now they won't remember. That's what they're doing to us. They won't remember. Well, you know what? I fucking remember because I'm one of those people who didn't, my, my work wasn't essential. So I had a lot of free time to look at what you fuckers said. <laughs> and I'm not wearing a fucking mask because you can't, they won't remember. I'm not part of your fucking royalty. You don't get to you, you don't get to do that to me. He, he won't remember. He won't remember. No, I fucking remember. And you know what? Even if I even if I didn't remember, I still wouldn't wear I still wouldn't wear the fucking thing. Because that's the only health remedy, I think, in history that involves you doing something unhealthy. You people don't know what you're talking about. You know, again, the the guy in Scotland, the health whoever that fucking health minister there was, he was a psychiatrist. That's not proper medicine. No offense if you're a psychiatrist, but it, it's not like, you know, you're not a surgeon. You're not dealing with biological illnesses. You know, you're, <laughs> you read your Freud and you got your DM, D, uh, what is it? The D, uh, God, I should, I used to ridicule this all the time. The DM, diagnostic, DSM, the DSM-4, the Diagnostic, diagnosticians, statistic, the diagnostic Statistician's Manual. And that's their little book. They go, okay, you feel happy sometimes and sad, sad sometimes. Okay, uh, page 52. Ah, you have bipolar disorder and the uh, the solution is pills. Right? They don't even talk to client, the clients anymore, the patients. Right? They're just, all they are is pill dispensers. Most of them dispensing pills for Pfizer or, or, or hormone blockers for Pfizer. Right? Mengalas. But, but, you know, passionless. You know, people, they're not even sadistic. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, pill, pill. They're computers. They're computers, uh, computer people. Big tech, big, ph you know, look at the, the word biotech. How many people have seen this word lately? Biotech. We should run to the hills every time we hear that. Bio, right? Life, 
tech. Put, put it together. Bio. Tech. Do you know uh, Boris Johnson had a conversation with Bill Gates and this woman who uh, is the head of the bio tech. We should hear that term. We should fucking flee to the hills. I am. My plan is to go even more off grid uh, after um, after Paradise Lost is finished. You know, and just yeah, just go off. You know, live the. You know, I I wanted to come to the country, and then Boris Johnson decided that the city belonged in the country as well. Uh, but just go further in until it gets to a what? Who knows? A Custer's last stand kind of thing, but refuse to accept this this new normal and i i think we should go on like i want to go on i want to go on i am nailing my colors to this mask i think a lot of people are as i say i want to be very clear like in the early days i'm talking a couple weeks a week and a half a week at most uh, a week and a half two weeks at most you know of the washing the hands and for me, I've said it before, it was when, it was when they, the military is building the Florence Nightingale Hospital. They're not building it. All they're, you do, do you know what building is? Building is what they're doing out here. They're tearing down trees and pouring concrete over a garden. That's building. We're over there. They, they tore down a garden center, which the elderly like to visit. Uh, but they got rid of that so they could build 31 luxury flats for the new, young, hip, trendy, smart fuckers. God, I can't get my, this, this is just the, e, this is the eve of the mask thing. And I thank you all for your, as Vernon Coleman says, encouragement and support. You know, I haven't really read the, I read, I, I, I pop in, there was one comment. See, I'm like my girlfriend. I want to hit these people and I can't. And that's, that's the internet. That's like put, little pussies can do that. They can pop in and they could say, what did the guy say? From a, from a quite original genius comedian to a quite genuine paranoid conspiracy nut very sad right they this is why i hate the mental health thing they use mental health language sounds like you're better how sad they use this little thing sounds like you got anger issues right because they want you to be nice normal boring stupid and wearing the fucking mask like everybody else and believing, believing these cretins, whether that's Boris Johnson, the vessel or one of, but you know, you've, you've got them in your own country, wherever you are, you've got these little vessels, these receptacles, they, they look like living, breathing humans, but they're not, they're like little hollow receptacles by which all the bullshit and lies and deceit from whoever's running this fucking show get filtered in and out spit out their mouth. And Harry Truman said the buck stops here, right? So they can spit that bullshit out. You know, Boris Johnson could be the dispenser of this bullshit, and you have the power within yourself to no, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna force that bullshit back down your throat. And you can swallow that. And then you could spit it back up to the pigs who told us, stop. The stream of bullshit stops here with these things called ordinary people. It stops, and it stops by not putting the mask on because we don't want to get to that point that we that a lot of us thought was science fiction in the beginning like what compulsory vaccine you know we, we don't want to go there and you better do something that you know it, you're not really dissuading by your actions by the stuff that you've enshrined in law you're not really dissuading people who didn't want to go down that road and think that there might be compulsory vaccinations. You're not really showing us with your actions that that's not how this thing's going to fucking play out. <coughs> COVID. It's a COVID cough. You know, there were jokes in the beginning. I was calling people. I was, I'd cough on the phone and I'd say, that's a smoker's cough. And they'd laugh. You know, people, I don't know. But I think, I think you know, it, it'd be nice to go on record now. Because there were people before me, obviously, you know, the, the, the lady that I'm doing a gig for, she was there from the beginning. She said, you know, China does this once a year now. They fucking come out with a, here's a virus and shut down. Everybody, everybody go to sleep and turn off your lights and all that, right? Everything, all the, the climate change, the, the climate, the, the climate change debate. If you, if you talk with somebody about the climate change thing, it could get heated. 
But I think with them, I think with them, what they've done is they've ramped that up, that divisiveness, so much. That's why now I'm kind of leaning towards the side of this is purposeful confusion, right? It's it, it's to get us at each other's throats. That doesn't take away from the fact that even so, even if that was it, right? Even if it wasn't a nefarious globalist takeover, you know, a conspiracy theorist, I would argue, would say this is definitively what this proves. All I'm going to, this is what I see. And this is what I feel is, is wrong about this. If we give them an inch, they're going to take a fucking lot. Why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't they? It becomes a habit, like smoking. You smoke a cigarette, you inhale a cigarette, you enjoy it, and then you, you find that you're addicted to smoking. Why wouldn't the same go for power? So, wow, we've got a pandemic on our hands. An emergency Powers Act? Uh, yep, Florence Nightingale Hospital, shut that down, stay away from your children, no school. Why wouldn't they do that? It would become addicting. You think, you think they're going to want to go back now? And, uh, okay, what do the people think? It's too late now, motherfucker, because I think you got an idea that we fucking hate your guts. You think we're going to have any choice now? <laughs> You're going to give us choice now after you have fucked up the economy, children's education, society itself, the very concept of normality, religion, belief in God. And we're going to turn around and say, yeah, I'll probably vote for him again. You're done. All you have is a strangle. That's all they've got is a stranglehold on power. The WHO. The w, that's, all, that's all about stupid people. Like I said before, stupid people who think that rich, you know, very rich people on their own are horrible. But somehow when they get together from different countries and sit down for a photo op, that's heaven on earth. We're not that dumb. So that's what, the, you know, the climate change arguments, any other political arguments, even the Brexit argument. I wouldn't say they were civil. Of course they weren't civil. But you did go home at night going like, oh, fuck, what else is on, you know, I'm going to watch an old movie, right? This is a situation where it's like, it's so ramped up. You're not wearing a mask, you're killing people. Oh, what's the matter? Was I not falling for the, I don't want to, I don't want to put wind turbines all over the, uh, all, all over the ocean, to, to fuck up the landscape and kill the birds. I wasn't falling for that. Every, every time you said that I was killing the earth, I wasn't falling for that. So now you've got a virus. You're, you're going to bring it down more. You know, I'm killing my neighbor, right? Yeah, I wasn't, we weren't falling for the, I'm killing the earth shit. So now you got to make it closer to home. You're killing that person over there. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not because I believe in God. And I don't, I, I, I don't see... In my conception of, of divinity and, and what, what the human condition is, I don't see it. You want me to punish myself. You want old people to punish themselves. If they're a healthy person in their 70s, you want them to punish themselves by wearing a mask in the name of the greater good. Right. So this guy, this is why I don't read the comments sometimes, because I find that I end up, you know, responding to these people. And then I say, oh, God, I'm a part of the problem. The guy says, from a quite original comedic genius to a, this is his words, I'm not calling myself a genius. He's calling me a genius. From a quite original comedic genius. He's going to get to me like that. Oh, I've really fallen from such great heights. Why can't I be like Greg on DJ One, the DJ One program, and do the, and Will Franken host the Up Years to Coronavirus Day with celebrities around the world, people sharing their own stories, lockdown diaries about coronavirus and this invisible killer? That, is that your definition of, an, of a genius, you fucking flaccid cunt? What a dick! He's gonna get to me like that. I've sunk from such great heights. From a right to a paranoid conspiracy nut, so sad. And I just thought it was like, what? I, it's like the it's like the other guy. He says you're not wearing a mask. I've been following your career for 15 years. You're not wearing a mask. I said you followed my career for 15 fucking years. You saw all of the things I made fun of. Attacked all of the fucking institutions that I did. Either all of these things. That I held in such contempt. You follow that for 15 fucking years and you are you are worried that I'm not wearing a mask? I think they've, I, who knows, they're like little robot people that get this from somewhere else. 
because I've fallen from such a and I and I said to the guy, I said, you you might have been one of those people a year ago, maybe saying rah rah rah, he's making fun of burkas, and now you're going boo boo boo, he's making fun of masks. I know what this shit. It's not about health. California. Anybody watch from from California? They're stop. I heard the sheriffs are stopping people in the street now. Just in the street, you gotta wear a mask in the fucking street now. We don't want to live like this. And we can only let them. Here's another little story that came up. Thank you for all your encouragement and support. Patreon.com stroke Will Franken is the place to go. I know I've lost people. I've lost people over this. Just like I've lost people over other things. You know, I voted for Trump because I thought he, he was speaking. I thought he was speaking to working class people in a way that uh, others hadn't been. And, you know, if you want to speak to working class people, working class people don't give a fuck about this climate change nonsense. I know some people will disagree, but by and large, if you were to call, hi, you want to do your bit to help the green economy? Absolutely. I want to go to heaven. Okay. Uh, how would you like to be taxed in uh, order to, right? Especially in this economy. See, in this economy now, given what they've fucking done to us, that shit's not going to fall. So the only way they can ram through climate change shit now is against our knowledge Health Secretary Matt Hancock announced on 14th July that wearing a face covering in shops and supermarkets would be compulsory from Friday 24th July. He's a fucking war criminal. I'm convinced. He is a fuck. Like I say, every day I wake up hating a different member of the government. You know, Boris Johnson is the hollow, stupid vessel that says, oh, I'm not a communist. I'm not a sinophobe. I'm not a communist. I'm not a sinophobe. The, the big show against China now, a little, little too little too late. Plus, you know, Huawei gets to hang out here for seven more years. Did you know that? That's seven more years of fucking shit up. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, but the prime, we, we, the prime minister's spokesman has said, we will be publishing the full guidance shortly. Short, Very shortly, I imagine. Because it, it's the 23rd. The 23rd. They're gonna, so they're going to publish some guidance about face masks. You know, they, they're... Fucking make sure, you, just don't, just don't wear it. Just don't wear the mask. A Department of Health spokesman said, if a shop or supermarket has a cafe or a seating area to eat and drink, you can remove your face covering in that area. I can, I can fucking do whatever I want with that. Right? There are laws that make sense, and there are laws that don't, and this is one that doesn't make sense. So back to the original thing. Even if this is just purposeful confusion to get us to go, well, well yes, to drive us mad. That cloth still has nothing to do with health. So chuck it. Chuck that fucking face covering. It has nothing to do with health. And I don't agree with the... I heard some of the Peter... I haven't actually been following Peter Hitchens. Uh, my go-to guys have been Vernon Coleman. And he's very regular. Every, every 7 p.m. every day, this fucking guy. I love it. It's just like... like you know, Right around dinner time. It's like, dinner with Vernon. I fucking love Vernon Coleman. It's, and he reads from his notes for the day... You know, and it's just, yeah, I, I quite like what I've seen so far. In fact, when I first, I've only, was it three weeks ago, somebody told me, I said, I, you know, we were sharing people that we watched and I hadn't heard of Vernon Coleman and I immediately went through the whole back catalog, you know, uh, James Corbett, uh, sometimes I pop into this thing called conscious resistance because I like this guy, Derek Bros. He, uh, he's a bit more of a hippie, you know, but he, uh, and, and an anarchist, which is, you know, I, when I was younger, I used to call myself an anarchist and I think that's coming out now. It's, you know, definitely like we have, we have the, I think the whole government thing kind of has just kind of fallen flat this year. <laughs> not, not really working, not really working anymore. Is it working? If you, I mean, if you, if you have school children, is it working? Has the, has the government worked for you? Doesn't it seem like they're driving your children insane and, and will continue to do so to drive them mad and make them so dependent on, on medicine and technology and, you know, and I keep thinking homeschool, homeschool. There's no reason to, everybody, if you're not, again, if you're not a eugenicist, like the fucking assholes telling us to do this shit. Like Bill fucking Gates, a eugenicist, if you're not one of those, then you believe that humans can learn things. 
No matter what age you are or where you come from, you know, there were slaves that taught themselves to read. And that's why the, the slave owners did not, that was why it was a punishable offense to teach a slave to read. Do you understand how important that is? It, you know, it, it wasn't like, you know, and now it's like compulsory that your child has a fucking screen all the fucking time. Right. There was a reason why that was against the law, because that gave them a fucking fighting chance. And what I'm doing with Paradise Lost, just to just to reiterate, you know, my production of Paradise Lost, as so many people like Vernon Coleman and I guess UK Column News and all that, are very good at pointing out the propaganda lies of the news. I hope I can do my little bit to point out what shit entertainment that they've been giving us and what from what heights they fell right like the uh like the little commentator the other day a great comedic genius to a sad paranoid conspiracy theorist right no 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 that belongs to the bbc right from a from a corporation that produced brilliant comedy brilliant drama right enlightening programs in the fucking toilet Nothing but a propaganda rag. And I don't know if it was CBC, was it CBC? What's the one in Canada? I don't know if that was them or not, but they did. They did do a little narc story. Some people are, some people are forging fake, fake exemption cards for Matt. Oh, you fucking little, you little rat. And would you be the one in the concentration camp to say, I'll, I'll shove them in the ovens if you're good to me. Now, come on. Some people might say that's hyperbolic, and I never thought I would use that language, but, but again, do you think people who have received power are not going to get addicted to power? Do you honestly think a man like Bill Gates, who for some weird, you know, one of the first, we went on, Net, my friend has a Netflix account, and he, he gave me his Netflix account, and one of the first things in, in the lockdown was I saw that Bill Gates had done a fucking documentary on pandemics, and I thought that was quick. I thought he did it because of this thing. And I watched him, and he only did that a few months ago. He made a little fucking thing for Netflix about the dangers of pandemics and what a pandemic looks like and all this stuff. And it was out on Netflix. That's cool. I mean, that's okay. So that's, you know, conspiracy theory. Okay, that's that was one thing. But then they also, they did have this thing, this is not conspiracy, they had a thing called Event 201 where they staged a fucking pandemic and talked about what, what they would do if there was any misinformation and how they would they would spread it with a, a flood of propaganda to try to suppress the misinformation. So that's two things, right? There, there was thing after fucking thing with this <coughs> that I think anybody at this stage who's, who's still on board with this is a deadly invisible killer I have a feeling the numbers of people who believe that are going to dwindle day by day. This this is the this is the Orwellian. Uh, we have always been at war with East, uh, Eurasia. We have never been at war with Oceania. We have always been at war with Oceania. We have never been at war with it. It is. It's very. It's, it's strategic confusion. You know. I mean, we may. We, as far as I know, we may be doing Russia's bidding. Confused mask. Confused. Yes, mask. Ooh, don't wear the mask. Just don't wear. The, opt out. Opt out. I am opting out of wearing the mask. Whether you're in a city and you've got uh, a protest movement that's all going en masse into a shop not wearing mask, or whether you're in a smaller locale and you just have people on the inside, as I say, whatever means you need to not wear that mask, you know, I, I have even counted the possibility of receiving the 100 pound fine and just fucking ignoring them one after the other, you know. But I, I have a feeling. I think because I, I think because I saw these um, these clips of groups like Keep Britain Free. I mean, they just boy, that's good. Okay, so there's, there's some pushback. Keep Britain Free. This thing called Stand Up X uh, that are having protest about this, and maybe we will not go. We we will rage against the dying of the light, which makes me feel sad about America right now because. They've gotten to so many states that have opened their economies early, right? But Georgia, Texas, there's a spike. If they took a fucking test, if I if I took one of those corrupt tests, I remember there was a... So I'm going to go on record as being... I, I was there about two weeks late, right? 
Some people, lots of people were there before me. Lots of people, like the moment this was announced, this is fucking right. Because I imagine there, there might be a lot of Johnny come lately's down the road. You know, seven months down the road. But that's the thing. We Anybody who is pushing back against this bullshit, we, we shouldn't go, where were you? Where were you? Where were you? We need everybody. Right? Even if they're getting right to the moment, they're, they're, what's wrong with the vaccine? What's wrong with the vaccine? They get right to that moment, they're just about to fucking inject you with that thing, and then they realize, no. It doesn't matter. Anybody, there's, you know, anybody can be saved. Anybody can learn things. Anybody can be saved. You know, I can take, I can take the, take the fancy literature they were given at Oxford and I can spit it back at them and know it better than them. You know, and there's people like Vernon Coleman knows more about science than these assholes. Obviously, Bill Gates is a software. He's a—he's not even a software expert. He's a software. He's a thieving little fucking corporate bitch. That's what he is. That's what he is. Now, did he get? Did, do you think Bill Gates got very, very rich being a little steep, sne- sniveling little fucking corporate thief? And then did he become a good person all of a sudden? Now that I'm rich, I want to help people. Nope. We know. We know in our heart, we, it's like there's, there's people who hear terms like birth spacing for the people of Africa, and it sends a chill down their spine. And I guess there's people that don't get the chill down the spine, right? They just, they go, well, birth spacing Africa. I mean, population is an issue, right? There's, but there's people who hear that, like, you, you would like to tell African women when and how many babies to have, like China, you know, some people can hear that. It's a, some people can hear face mask will be compulsory in shops in England, and it doesn't send a chill down their spine. It does not give them a stomach ache because they know they're going to comply. For people like me, it gives, gives me a stomach ache because I've got other shit to do, right? You know, I've got this ongoing project with this poem, you know. This was a hassle I didn't fucking need, right? And so for any, anybody who tells you, oh, you're, what's, you're a little wuss because you won't wear a piece of cloth. We know how propaganda works. That's what you do. That's how you, that's how you think you're going to get to somebody like me. We'll, 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 he can't be guilt tripped. We've examined all his data. We stole all his data. And we analyzed it. And he's one of those people like in the prisoner, you know, he's number six. Like he can't be guilt tripped or hashtagged. He's one of those holdouts. You can't hashtag and guilt trip him. Hmm. He thinks he's brave. Try this on him. I don't think I'm brave. I just hate bullshit. Right? I mean, it, 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 I, well, I'm free. Man. It's like, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm in conflict with this law. Actually, I do think I'm brave. But you don't think about it. You don't think about it because you're actually afraid when you do things. Right? I do things even though I'm afraid of them. Whether that's making fun of the things that I make fun of or whatever. I do it, be, I do it because... I feel like I have to, right? But that's not that, not that there's no fear that, that comes along. Of course there's fear that comes. Sometimes the fear ramps me up and gets me excited or whatever. That's why I like to get on stage, you know? It's, 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 it's part of the whole thing. It's part of the whole human experience. You know, I don't think these people actually get afraid of anything because they're dead to the world. They're like, they told us to put on a mask, stop killing people. Like, they're, they're, they're neither, like, there's no passion in any direction. But that's what that maybe maybe some of them have used it on you. Maybe why well, be a little worse, right? That that's maybe how that's that's how they got to Texas. I imagine. What do we know about Texas? What does the computer say about people from Texas? Cowboys. Hmm. Try the worse propaganda. Why are you being a little worse? Oh, you want to see? Why don't you come here and tell me I'm a worse to my face? Yeah. No, we're not going to do so. That's tomorrow, and it just so happens that you know tomorrow I've, I've got enough groceries for today, and tomorrow means I'm going to go get my groceries. <laughs> Foggy glasses, recycling kids. Your guy to wearing a mask. I'll close on this. How about that? And I hope you guys are enjoying these. I know some of you are. Some of you just some of you are, are comedy unleashed people, just kind of sniffing around, waiting to hear any mentions, so you can click the you know, and then possibly send a fake profile out to say. <laughs> Uh, where is that story about basic universal income? Right, basic universal income could slow the spread of the virus. And, I, and as soon as I read that, I thought, could it really? Basic universal income could slow the spread of the virus. 
Well, la de fucking da. What do you know about that? I think they fucked up. I think they made a play for us. They, whoever these fucking creeps are, and their propaganda ministers, they made a play for us because they thought we were stupid. In other words, they thought we were slaves. They didn't know that we were slaves that had taught ourselves to read. Right? And that, and that people like me can see a story like this and go, could it really? Basic universal income, sorry, virus. Because I've got to get to work. I've got, I am finishing Paradise Lost today. There's one more thing I've got to do. Basic universal they changed the, the universal basic income, blah, 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 blah. Oh, where is this fucking news? News. Coronavirus. They had this story on the BBC this morning that said it could slow the virus. Let me pause this. I'm going to get this up. Hold on. Okay. I can't find it, but I am not lying. I got up. The BBC ran a story this morning and it said that basic universe experts say basic uni universal income could slow the spread of the virus. And I can't find it now. So if anybody can find that, I don't know if they do this. Do they make shit just go down the memory hole? Do they do a comedy unleashed and, and pull down shit that they think? I've noticed this with some comments. People will pop up and I'll respond to a comment like a negative. Well, might be a little and they'll disappear all of a sudden. And I always wonder. I always think they have. Maybe they stop and they read what they wrote and they go, oh, God, I don't want to go down on record of saying that. <laughs> what if I'm wrong? Right. I'm nailing my colors to the mast on this one. You know, this is, yes, yes, I was, you know, it, it took me a couple of weeks to, you know, get on board with this not being on board, not being on the level. If anybody can find that, uh, there was a story I can't find, but basic, it was, it said basic, experts say basic universal income. This was about an hour ago. Basic universal income could slow the spread of the virus, which is what I imagine they want everybody who's a small, no offense to people who are on benefits. I have always, no matter how poor I've been, I've always tried to avoid being on benefits. I think there was once back in Missouri, like it was a, yeah, a couple of weeks and it was, it was more paperwork. It was, a, it was easier to go to work than it was trying to get paid for not going to work. And since then it's just fuck, go to work. I know there's people on benefits, you know, but you are, would you want to be beholden to psychopaths that are in charge of the world right now? Really? Love yourself more than that. Again, we are, we are the slaves that are teaching ourselves to read. That's what we are. And one day, my friends, we're gonna we're gonna find ourselves on the winning side of whatever civil war this fucking thing is. You know. So if anybody can find that, I I would uh, I maybe maybe they do. Maybe they make. I wouldn't be surprised to make stories disappear. They, they probably let that one out of the bag too early. It could slow the spread of the virus. They're not gonna buy that. They're not gonna buy that. I, it was a nice, lovely article. It really was. But they're not gonna. Yeah. There's people out there that are a little bit. Yeah. We, I just read the stats. There's a lot of people in Britain not going to wear that mask. So let's slowly, softly, softly catch a monkey, right? Let's make it disappear. We'll put it up in a couple months' time, right around the time of the vaccine. So once the vaccine's ready and raring to go, we'll whoop out the basic. We'd love to give you your basic universal income because we know you need to feed your children, but you haven't had the vaccine yet. I'll tell you what. If they don't want us to think like conspiracy theory people, they certainly aren't fucking helping out with any of their actions, <laughs> right? What are, they, what are they showing you that makes you think this is not a conspiracy? Basic universal income could slow the spread of the virus. How? By making us beholden to you, you fuckers. Don't get on it if you can avoid it. I know people are on, I know people are on benefits, but if there's a way not to, you know, just like the, if there's a way not to, to wear the mask, if you can find, I love Vernon Coleman, some of his latest videos, he's been, he's been telling like practical contingency things, if you can do them, right? If you've got people on the inside that, that work in shops, shop locally, go to, go to whatever small businesses are still around, uh, do what you can to preserve not only you, you and your life. But also uh, that that time honored sense of you know that these things that we cherish, like raising a pint at the pub, seeing your neighbor's face, right, seeing people smiling or frowning or whatever, you know, and being okay with 
being dirty sometimes. Again, back to the shame thing. That's the one thing they couldn't. They they can't get us with the dog gimp mask, and then you know I saw you spanking somebody in assless chaps. They can't get us that way, but they can say your body is dirty. Your body is inherently dirty, and it's not because we were made in the image of the Creator, and that includes our face. God bless you all, and good night.